Hey, good morning, everybody. All right, back at the hangar for more action, and I got a treat for you guys today. We're gonna to take an in-depth look with Crew Chief Al and do the engine inspection so you guys get to see an in-depth look at the heart of the F4 Phantom, the J79 engine. So let's go, let's go check this out. All right, so here we are right underneath the right-hand engine. It says, these are the GE J79-15 afterburning engines. So we're gonna start from the front and work our way towards the back and let's uh let's just take it away at the front how's it going now what we got going on here all right this is the very front bottom of the engine this is your accessory gear drive case um, it drives both the hydraulic pumps and fuel pump and the starter is uh, engaged into the gear box okay okay and right here you can see the bottom of the right hydraulic pump and the left one is over on this side they sit up there like a v okay Okay, and then these are the uh, quick disconnects. These pumps are actually pretty easy and quick to get in and out. Well, in a relative way. Um, and then fuel tank starts right here. You can see this fuel line right here. Oh, yeah, it's just very visible. Let's see if I can get the oil. Yep, you guys can see that little silver fitting right there just forward of the hoses. Okay. We'll move on back a little bit. All right. And now we're getting to the heart of the engine. All right. Long ago when they used to do cartridge starts, this is where you would load the cartridge in. And this is the starter itself. We use the external air to go in there. This is the, the exit or the outlet and this is the, in, the inlet. Okay. Or vice versa, anyway. Right. So that's the inlet right there on the inboard side, right? What? It, it vents overboard? Right. It comes, goes in one of these and comes out the other. Right. And does all the little, gets it spinning fast enough so we can hit the igniters. Right. Once it gets up to 14%, you go over the horn with the, the throttle and hit the ignition button. And uh, when it lights off, you just keep the air on it till it gets up to 35, 45%. Nice. Right. Okay. And there's a the bottom of the engine. Here's your service, oil servicing ports. And that's where we hook up the, the oil cart, right? Right, right. <clears throat> This is an oil filter. This is a main fuel filter. That's the main fuselage fuel filter. Yep. Okay, and of course, as you can see, this is the fuel control. This is what actually acts as like the carburetor or injector system, whatever you want to call it. Right. Okay. And I think that's where the throttle's going from right yeah, there, right? That's, that's the throttle, it goes into the fuel control. This part of it is called a torque booster, which uh, I guess aids the pilot in being able to move uh, the throttle. Okay. The only thing bad about this torque booster is if for some reason it gets disconnected, it, the engine will go automatically go to full afterburner. <laughs> and that kind of get hairy. Nice. Okay. That's, yeah, it's not a, that's not a good way to fly. Well, this is the main fuel line from the tanks to your um, fuel pump. That's coming off the accessory gear case too? Uh, yeah, the fuel pump is driven by the accessory gear case. Okay. All righty, and then we can move on back a little bit. Ready? So what's this door right here? This is the auxiliary air door, just commonly known as the ox air door. Uh, this provides cooling air on the ground or when there are certain pressure conditions inside the engine bay. It usually stays closed and flush, and then it'll open and close depending on demand. Um, the dangerous thing about this door is the, the 3,000 pressure, 3,000 psi hydraulic system is not regulated on this uh, actuator. So if it loses generator power, it slams shut. And if you happen to have uh, any vestige of your body in there, it's coming off. <laughs> so this, this thing eats fingers. Oh, it, it bites and eats. <laughs> Oof, that sounds very unpleasant. Well, don't do that. <laughs> Ooh. A lot of stuff going on back here. Oh yeah, well, you got a lot of, uh, this is, well, basically, this is the bleed air. It comes off the 17th stage of the compressor. Um, and the bleed air drives a lot of things on here, like um, your heater, your uh, air conditioning, equipment cooling. Um, it also uh, provides the bleed air to the boundary layer control on leading edge flaps. Right. Okay. Yeah, because this didn't have, this model did not have the, the, the leading edge slats. That was an E model, yeah. Um, anyways, as you can see, there's a whole lot going on back here. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of hoses and stuff. What's what's all this? Well, 
I really couldn't tell you in detail what all of it is. Some of this, okay, this is your AB fuel pump. Oh, for the after burner? Yeah. This is a fuel line back. Oh, this this main line right here? It's fuel oil, let me see. That's a fuel drain. Let's see, see where I've got them disconnected it. From, okay. From door 92. Oh, that's from the engine case? Right. These are your after burner um, spray bars. And you see there's four lines going in because this is a four stage afterburner. You can go from one, two, three, four, and, it, and it, you can tell the difference every time it goes into another section of the burner. So there's the physical detents on the throttle so you can feel them? Right, well actually no, you don't really feel a detent, but you, if you move it, you can, the airplane will tell you it's in another stage of burner. Gotcha. Neat. And that's the different rings that's in the, uh, that's up, up inside the well, bar? The, the flame holder rings are, are just, there to hold the flame in. Um, we'll go back and look at that in a minute. But right here above you, that's an uh, oil, engine oil hydraulic nozzle uh, actuator. There's one on, there are two on the bottom and two on the top. And that's what's making the, the, the nozzles? Close, right, it'll the close the nozzle or open the nozzle. Okay. And, and then right here, excuse me. Oh, oh. You see the linkage to it? Yep. And this right here, this cable goes to the engine to the nozzle position transmitter. It tells uh, the instruments in the cockpit how, at what stage the, the nozzle's at. And it, it's like a open one quarter, half, and three quarters, and closed. Okay. And when you go in the three quarters closed, when the engine's running at 100%, and then as yeah. soon as they stick it in burner, it goes back to wide open. Mm -hmm. And this is the outside of the burner can. Inside the can, there's another layer. There's a thin layer of cooling air that comes through here to keep it from burning up. Right. And yeah. if anybody's uh, familiar with the howl of the, of the F4 when it would go over, it's caused by this nozzle, the engine nozzle. That part, the way the air goes through there, the, other, the, the longer nozzles won't do it, just the short nozzles. Okay. And speaking of burning up, I believe that's what these little wires are for that's that's around the engine bay. That's is the part of the fire detection circuit, right? Right, fire and overheat. Um, what happens is these little bitty tubes have gas in them. And of course, when they get hit with a high heat, the gas will expand and close the switch. And the connection. So there's one of them right there. Right. And then... And these, these are fuel drains that are attached to the airplane. And, uh, you're supposed to when you when you land. You're supposed to uh, bring it up to 70 percent for a, a, a minute or a little bit, and that way it'll scavenge all the fuel back up into the engine. But if you just come in and shut down, it'll pee gas all over the ground. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, it, it, the crew only got a fire indication in the cockpit, but they didn't have any way of extinguishing the fire. Correct? No, no, they, they did an indication, but they, I mean, here's something: you can get a, oh, oh, it's fire and overheat. Uh, because the overheat part is actually back here with the, the nozzle. But uh, this, these ducts are known to blow every now and then. I mean, they'll just blow a chunk of hole, and that's very hot air coming off the engine. Mm -hmm. It's not burning, but it's the 17th stage. And it'll get so hot right here that it'll set off the indicator. So you're not really sure, if, but you still don't want that hot air blowing very long, but you don't know if you've got a fire or if you just got a blown duct. Right. You know. So that'd be an in-flight shutdown and hope for the best kind of situation? Or bring it back to idle, if nothing else. Okay. And that's, that's the basic parts of the engine. This is the lower tangential mounts. There's uh, five engine mounts on this. The lower, the upper, the skate mount, side mount. Uh -oh. oh, and the main mount. Oh, okay. sorry. This is the main mount right up here. Oh, wow. You can see it or not. Just barely see that. A little cone-shaped thing. Yep. That's the main mount. Roughly, how much does this weigh? Oh, this engine's probably about 4,000 pounds, I think. Wow. Produces a lot more thrust than that. Yeah, it sure does. The thrust to weight ratio of the engine is pretty good. But once you stick it in a big old heavy airplane like this, it goes down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can get back there. To the nozzle? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Now all the way forward you can see the turbine wheel. There's two turbine wheels on this, but there's not. Uh, there's only one compressor. There's not an N1 and an N2. Okay, and you can see the, the turbine blades all the way up at the front. Yep. And then you've got those support struts. 
and then right uh, before the right after the turbine blade and before the struts, you can see one of the um, uh, spray bars for the afterburner. Yep. And these rings right here are just made to hold the fire in the tail of the engine. So you don't get blown right, out like a candle? Yeah, it just doesn't blow it out. And uh, right down there in that that hole right there is the igniter. Uh -huh. that little guy right there? The guy down there in the bottom. Yeah. Yep. In between okay. ring one and three? Right. One of those, you know. Nice. And then, like I said, here's the liner. And you've got a primary nozzle. That's this one. Yep. And you've got the secondary nozzle. Which is this one, and they both work in, in tandem at the same time. There, wow, a lot of moving parts. And then here's the uh, overheat loop right there. Yep, just see where the wire goes back into the airplane. Wow, fun stuff. That, that's a, the, the quickie tour of the J79 GE15. Yeah, well, thanks a bunch for showing us that. Sure thing. Y'all come on down and help us work on this jet. <laughs> we could, we'd love to have the extra help. And this is how we change the tire on an F4 Phantom. All the bolts are on the inside of the wheel. This is the left main gear. NASCAR fast as far as changing the tire, but she's looking good and she's on there and torqued down and inspected, so good to go on the left main gear. What's that little jack screw for up at the top? Okay, that's one of the sway braces. You can see the bottom one here and one there, and there's two more on the other side, and this is for when you hang centerline stores. They'll lock in here like you can put the centerline tank in your, the standpipes here. Okay. And then the sway braces come down. Of course, they tighten against the tank so it doesn't... And keep it from rocking right. as it's flying. Right. Okay. I was always curious about those. Yeah. They're neat. They'd, they'd probably do the same thing whenever they hung the big bomb, huh? Yeah, well, actually the bombs will go out on the, the station. And when I was uh, uh, working on them, we had these 2,000-pound bombs that just barely cleared the gear doors. It's like way out there. Oh, it, on this station here? On, on the inboard pylon here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Good stuff. That's starting to make some noise. Yep. And you can see, it's not that hot here today, and it's not raining. It's the humidity. So you want to get all soaking wet just from sitting here, <laughs> this is the place to be. Yeah, it's, it's very humid today. At least it's not freezing cold either. Of course, it's your landing gear bay. Nice. Here's a. Uh, you see this? This has hydraulic, three hydraulic systems. You got PC1, PC2, and the utility. This is the quick disconnect for the PC2, and this is where you service the PC2 reservoir. And then this is the uh, G meter counter that's different from the one in the cockpit. And you got your refuel switch behind here. And then the other side's got a, it's pretty much the same thing with a couple of different switches. So that's where the ground crew would uh, 
uh, open and close valves to uh, refuel. Right. And then uh, when the battery's hooked up and everything's working, if, if it's kind of quiet, when you when you hit the switch to refuel, you can hear the valve go, woo! <laughs> nice. Wow. Neat stuff. It looks right. like one of the gear gear up switches, correct? Wait. Right there. Here? Yeah. Yeah, it's a door up switch. Okay. Good. Yeah, the, they've got sequence switches. You want to make sure the door's open before the gear comes down and, and vice versa. Right. Things gotta happen in the right order. Wow. And she's a beastie. Oh, yes, she is. Yes, she is. What a good one. Yeah, we yeah. definitely want her in the air again. Nice. This was a workhorse during Vietnam. This thing carried a load. Yes, it did. <laughs> awesome. All right. That's all we have for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.